Now the best part about IFR flying is even with 800 meters visibility and a cloud base as low as 300 feet, we can still go flying. And today, that's exactly what we did. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. And in today's video, I've got an IFR flight down to Shoreham. Now, I was especially excited for today's flight because actually my dad is from Shoreham, so I was definitely excited to go head down there. However, when I woke up in the morning, I was gutted to see that the weather was so bad and it was a real 50-50 whether we would be going or not. Despite us only needing the low conditions for IFR flying, the weather wasn't great. But here we are applying full power on runway 19, taking off despite the poor conditions we only had 800 meters visibility 300 feet cloud base so it really was poor however we did know that this was only in the oxford area and once we got up and out fingers crossed it would clear up for us today we're in the da42 ng-6 which is one of the more powerful aircraft that we have in the fleet once we get airborne i pull my hood down and bring the gear up and we have a positive rate of climb we use the hood to simulate imc conditions even when it's not however today it pretty much was from quite a low altitude now in this video just like my last video we do go up into the airways which is class a airspace and whenever we do this we must submit a flight plan whenever we submit a flight plan air traffic control will give us a departure instruction before we leave this will be something like after departure We'll climb to altitude 2,500 feet and fly a heading of 315. So very simply, after our departure, we do exactly as they say, and then once up for a little bit, and just before reaching 2,500 feet normally, or whatever altitude we've been cleared to, then they will normally clear us up to a flight level. And in this case, I believe we got cleared up to flight level 90. Now you can see me here just looking out onto the wings, checking for icing. And for those who don't know, when we are in cloud and in moisture, we can get a build up of ice, especially when the temperature is so low at higher altitudes. We have anti-ice systems on the aircraft to prevent this icing. And the reason these are so important is because if we do get a build up of ice on the wings, this can lead to a large decrease in lift, which can even put us into a stall if we let it build up all the way. However, with the correct use of the anti Lighting systems we can prevent this but here we are after a short flight speaking to London Control in the airways we can see we're approaching Shoreham right on the coast of England now the plan was once we got to Shoreham we'd start off by entering the hold and then after that we'll do an RNP approach which is essentially an approach using our GPS and knowing our height we can work out if we're high or low of the runway depending on our distance and one thing that we all thought was really cool is that the hold itself at shore was directly over the sea so on the outbound leg we crossed the coast and went out of the sea did a turn and then on the inbound leg coming back in and as you'll see in a little bit we actually saw the brighton football team training as the inbound leg flew straight over their training ground but let me know down in the comments below if you guys have ever been to Shoreham and if you have let me know what you thought of it as here we can see a quick view of the runway which we're going to be doing the approach at so if you guys haven't actually been to Shoreham yourselves let me know what you think of it by the views from the video and if you guys do enjoy today's video make sure you leave a like and subscribe for more of this type of content i really do appreciate all the support and now here we are in the rate one turn to go from the outbound to the inbound leg of our hold right over the sea as i mentioned earlier and then as you can see just now we're going to fly over the brighton football team training and as we zoom in here if you look carefully you will actually be able to see some of the players warming up which we all thought was really cool and i've, I've seen a few football stadiums as i have been flying over the country but i've never actually seen anyone playing so i thought this was pretty cool but now it's time to leave the hold and start the RMP approach. And if you look carefully on that primary flight display on the left hand screen, we can see that magenta arrow just towards the bottom. And I can use this to tell if I'm on or off the center line and use it to correct. Then we can use the distance we are from the runway using the GPS to work out if we're high or low. But once we got to that decision altitude, it was in fact time to go around. So we apply full power and when we have that positive rate of climb bring the flaps and gear up and of course this is then followed by a simulated engine failure my instructor fails the left engine i control the aircraft put the power gear and flaps up then we bring that left power all the way back and we simulate shutting off the left engine master we don't actually do this in real life but we just touch it to simulate it 
Then, once we confirm that there's no fire, we can do our procedures to control and save the right engine that is working, possibly do a restart in a real flight, but also make a pan pan call to try and land. But once that's all done, and my instructor sees that I know how to do all of that, he'll give me the left engine back, we'll apply power, and then it'll be back a normal flight, IFR diver, back to Oxford. However, on this day, Shoreham decided to be very nice to us and actually offered us another RMP approach if we wished. And we thought, while we were down south, why not take the practice? So actually, we went, did a missed approach straight back into the hold. And then we decided to do another RMP approach, the exact same with no delay, straight over the hold and then onto the localizer for the RMP approach. And as you can see, we're about to get a quick glimpse of the runway on final. But then, as explained before, once we did the second RMP approach, it was a normal divert back to Oxford. And one other thing about Shoreham Airport, actually the glide slope on a normal approach will be about three degrees, but at Shoreham it's about four and a half due to the hills, which did make it quite challenging, but also it was good practice, as there are a few airports around the world like this. And here we can see what Rich is thinking so far. Now, during the divert back to Oxford, from Shoreham there actually is quite a lot of airspace right around the coast so we have to be really careful not to go in any as on the IFR diver back to Oxford we are not allowed to go in any controlled airspace but of course like in all of our flights we do do a lot of pre-planning to make sure that we are ready for when we do divert back to Oxford I had the route already planned out and I actually stored it before takeoff in the Garmin that way I could just quickly load it on the way back to save myself having to re-input it and in no time we're back to Oxford for of course another smooth landing by yours truly and let me know what you thought of this flight to Shoreham if you did enjoy remember to subscribe and remember to like and remember to keep an eye out on this channel because I've got some awesome videos planned in the near future and if you did enjoy this IFR flight, why not check out some VFR flying right here as it's my last flight before my commercial pilot's license exam. One of my most popular videos as well. Go give it a watch. Thanks for watching, guys.